I'm Dieter Kurtenbach. This is not the usual studio. Thanks for watching on YouTube, by the way. But I think I have a solution to the Warriors' biggest problem. And I mean that literally. We'll talk about it next. Locked on Warriors. Let's boogie. You are Locked on Warriors. Your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's good, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Warriors. I'm Dieter Kurtenbach. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day, even though we mostly do it in the afternoon. Doesn't have to make any sense. We just have to get this bad boy done. Thank you for listening in. Thank you for watching on YouTube. I'm riding solo today. And that's okay because we got to talk about the Warriors game against the Denver Nuggets this evening. We got to talk about Jonathan Kaminga making the Rising Stars Challenge. And we have to talk about Mr. James Wiseman. I want to start with this, though. Don't let the Warriors' current slump fool you into thinking that they're not very good. Don't let the lack of a big man, don't let, let the lack of positive defensive play, don't let, don't let Andrew Wiggins kind of falling off a cliff. Don't let any of that fool you. This team is fine. This team is tired. This team is looking forward to Cleveland more than any other humans in the history of the planet. No one has wanted to flee to the Cleve more than the 2021-2022 Golden State Warriors. Listen, we can go on and on. They're getting rocked in the paint. They give it, they're giving up way too many perimeter shots. A, a, a mere baseline of getting rocked in the paint. Now they're collapsing into the paint. They're leaving the perimeter open. They're playing a whack-a-mole game that they can't seem to win on defense. Let me just remind everybody of a couple of things. One, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't want to acknowledge, I don't want to uh, brush over these things. They are issues. They are clear and present dangers. But there's no clear and present problem for the Golden State Warriors, if, if you catch my drift. Right now, they're not playing good basketball. My, my guess is that they will not play good basketball tonight against Nikola Jokic, who is on one and has been on one all season. My guess is that they won't be playing good basketball tonight against the Denver Nuggets. Now, if they do, we'll all shut up. <laughs> but if they don't, then the cries for they need a big man. They messed up at the trade deadline. All this stuff will continue, continue, continue. A couple of things. One, they have the second best record in the NBA. Was that an accident? Was that something that just happened stancically? <laughs> happened stancically? Happened? I don't think so. I'd like to think that this team knew what it was doing when it won those games. I'd like to think the second best record in the NBA might have something to do with quality. Just throwing that out there. Has it been very good as of late? No. Have they had their big three at all this season? No. And that's the biggest thing. This is a team that misses Draymond Green. They were able to get by for a long time without Mr. Draymond Green. Okay. The tire hit the road. They need Draymond Green now because this defense is slacking. They're getting punked on the inside. Kavon Looney is tired. He is tired, tired, tired. The loon dog needs a nap. He needs five, six days in Mexico to just let loose, drink some Fit Aid, and come back strong. They put way too much on Kevon Looney's shoulders. Not that he wasn't able to handle it for a very long stretch of time, but he gets that thigh contusion, calf contusion. Ah, It's something in the leg. It's a contusion somewhere. And he hasn't been the same dude since. Just a step slower, just looks just like he's dragging. Let's be real. But he's the only center. And they're pushing him for 30-something minutes a game. And it was just not a sustainable formula. When you have Draymond Green as the other guy who's coming in at center, you can fill in a little bit in the gaps with Otto Porter and Nemia Bielitsa. You're doing pretty well. You're doing A-OK. It's a smaller league these days. The schedule has not been very conducive to the Warriors and helping them out in that regard because they've been getting big man after big man after big man. And Zubac, who is a very good big man, by the way, a very stable Competent big man, uh, maybe Isaiah Hartlestein isn't, but he was still getting him getting them buckets for the Clippers on Monday. Regardless, they have had to face somewhat of a murderer's row of bigs, and now Jokic comes to town tonight. Well, not this town that I'm in, but you know, San Francisco. Not lucky when it comes to scheduling. 
But don't forget how well the Warriors did against Anthony Davis, the ultimate beta fish. (laughs) They were just fine. They handled him with no problem. Anthony Davis couldn't handle Otto Porter, couldn't handle Jonathan Kaminga, couldn't handle Kevon Looney, even in his tired state. I'm not overly concerned about the center position. Right now, it looks like a big issue. Where are the other issues? Where are the other big issues for this Warriors team? Everything else, I think you can just push under the rug. Say, oh, the Warriors need another playmaker. I like Jordan Poole in that second unit backup point guard spot. I like him with the ball in his hands when the Warriors go to the second second wave, as I like to call it. I like having Otto Porter at the five. I like having Jonathan Kaminga at the five. I don't mind that Nemia Bielitsa. And by the way, if they wanted to make an upgrade, it would cost them $10 million. And that might not seem like a lot to you or I because, you know, billionaires. And I don't want to count Joe Lacob's money because heaven knows he's got enough of it, as do the rest of the Warriors owners. But that's a big-time upgrade. You're basically making a statement that the player that you're bringing in is 10 times better than Nemia Bielitsa. That guy is not available on the buyout market. You're not going to get a guy who's 10 times better. Twice as good? Maybe, if you're lucky. But you're paying the guy 10 times as much because, more or less, because of the tax calculator. You got to pay out Bielitsa's salary or Damian Lee's salary. You got to bring in the new guy. There's probably going to be a bit of a bidding war for that. And you're paying a repeater tax that, oh, last time I checked, it was close to seven. Might even be higher right now. It's all okay. And here's the weirdest part about this entire diatribical situation we've had going on to start off Locked On Warriors. I think it's going to get better because, one, Draymond, there's optimism that he's coming back. Not anytime soon, but first week of March, second week of March should be okay. James Wiseman should be back March 1. That's the date I'm throwing down right here, right now. Went five on five, sounded like it went good. The three on threes went good, so he went to five on five. He's coming along, and I know we've heard that before, and I know that a lot of people are anchored to this notion with James Wiseman that he's so far behind. He's been out for 11 months. That is more or less the typical frame of absence for someone who has a meniscus injury like James Wiseman did. You look at Jaron Jackson Jr. in Memphis, same thing. Steve Kerr misspoke at the beginning of the year thinking that they would have James Wiseman very early in the campaign. I don't know why anyone told him that. I don't know why he thought that. He misspoke. That was, uh, If that was the information being handed out at the time, that was silly, obviously. Because here we are in the middle of February, and James Wiseman might be back in a couple of weeks. But he's ramping up, and the ramp up is going A-OK. So what's the issue here for the Warriors? Why wouldn't they just roll with Wiseman? Is it because Wiseman wasn't very good last year? Get in line on that take, by the way. I, I'll be the first person to tell you he wasn't very good last year. Here's my question. Is he seven feet tall and gets six fouls when he enters an NBA game? Congratulations. He fits the Warriors' needs. Looney is going to play 20. Draymond Green is going to play 20-something at the center position. You have to fill 10 minutes max, 15 on a weird night, with a pretty capable stable of third string bigs and that's Bielitsa that's Otto Porter playing the five that's Jonathan Kaminga playing the five and oh yeah seven footer James Wiseman playing the five can he stand under the basket and deter anyone from going directly to the hoop congratulations you fill the need can he put his ass in somebody under the basket and maybe turn around and hit a hook shot maybe I don't know But if you can, you fill the need. Going out here and getting a Robin Lopez, what's Robin Lopez at 10 times the cost going to do that James Wiseman can't do? Or at least that James Wiseman doesn't deserve the opportunity to find out if he can do it or not. They drafted this guy number two overall. If he's not good enough to give you five to 10 minutes, not even meaningful minutes, I'm talking about bridge minutes between rotations. If he's not good enough to do that, then they should have just dropped them for nothing at the trade deadline. Because that's, by the way, what they would have gotten. If you can't even ask James Wiseman to give you five to ten minutes, if everybody is so down on this very talented player, by the way, 
Everybody's so down just because we haven't seen him. Out of sight, out of mind. Everybody's so down on this guy that five to ten minutes of James Wiseman seems like, oh, that's going to ruin the Warriors' championship chances. Then the Warriors' championship chances never existed in the first place. And by the way, get rid of James Wiseman as soon as possible because apparently he was the worst draft pick in NBA history. I don't know if it was a good draft pick. I advocated against the draft pick. At the same time, I think it'd be pretty foolish to just give up on the kid all of a sudden. There were flashes last year. There were moments. Now, will he fit in with what the Warriors are trying to do on a large scale? Can you give him 20-something minutes a night? I doubt it. Not unless you get a training camp in. Not unless you you have a system. You know, he's understanding the system a lot better. I think that's a lot to throw on a young player in a short period of time. We talk about Jonathan Kaminga's incredible transformation. Jonathan Kaminga didn't know what the hell he was doing at the beginning of the year. Had no idea. But he's gotten better. And he's gotten better. And he's played a little bit more. And Steve Kerr's thrown him in some spots that you wouldn't normally think, hey, let's play Jonathan Kaminga here. But he wants to see how he'll respond. He wants to challenge Jonathan Kaminga. The whole organization wants to challenge Jonathan Kaminga. They want him to keep improving. Is it necessary for the Warriors that Jonathan Kaminga is an impact player on this team come playoff time? No. Is it something that's happening? Yes. And they are better for it. James Wiseman, it's too late now to kind of get that kind of run. You have a very specific role for James Wiseman. It's a small role. It's a simple role. Let's see if he can execute it. Because, again, he's got seven feet of height and six fouls when he enters the game. And that's all the Warriors need right now when it comes to the big man. Be patient. The Warriors have three games left in in the month of uh, February, including tonight's game against the Denver Nuggets. There's going to be a lot of spacing. There's going to be a lot of rest. This team needs it. Draymond's coming back. And James Wiseman's coming in to be the seven-footer that this team needs. It's not the seven-footer everyone wants, but we got to live in reality world here. we got to understand that finances control everything in this game. And you got a seven-footer sitting in the wings, ready to come back. They're not going to go out and buy one at ten times the cost of what he actually would be getting on his paychecks from the Golden State Warriors. I want to tell you all about prize picks. NBA fans, if you're looking for a daily fantasy option, then you need to try the award-winning pick. Sorry, the award-winning app. It's my pick, award-winning app, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. I know it because I've played it, and I know that you'll figure it out too. Let me break it down for you here. It's really easy to use. You pick two to five players and an over-under on their projections. So I- I've done some of the other daily fantasy things, and you're playing against a bunch of dudes who are running a bunch of algorithms. That's no good. It's you against the house on prize picks. Here it is, over, under. What are you going to do? It's pretty straightforward, man. And it's an easy way to win. You can take these entries and knock them out 60 seconds or less. It's just you versus the projected numbers. It's you versus the house. And prize picks is safe and offers very fast withdrawals, which is something a lot of other places can't say. It's an award-winning app on the App Store and Google Play, so you know you're not dealing with something shady. You can go from points scored or rebounds or steals. I mean, James Wiseman fouls you could do. I don't know if that's actually the case. I haven't driven driven that deep into the prize picks app just yet. But James Wiseman fouls five a game. Just keep playing the over. Just keep playing the over right there. And prize picks doesn't just offer NBA. They have options on college basketball. Oh, boy, you guys watch college basketball lately? You're going to need something to get you through that game. College football, which isn't being played anymore. The NFL, which just ended. MLB also not being played, soccer, very much being played, and MMA, which I'm not really that into, but I know a lot of people are. So this is a spot for you, Prize Picks. Uh, for a limited time, Prize Picks have, has an exclusive, dare I say, no-brainer offer. And it goes out to all users. You put in 50 bucks, okay? You get 50 for free. And if a player in your first Prize Picks entry just scores a point, so, so long as you're not going with James Wiseman, all they need is a point. You can get another 50 bucks. It's great stuff. It's great stuff. But you got to use the promo code MBA. So it's an exclusive offer. We're only offering this at Locked On. Don't go check anywhere else. Only at Locked On. You sign up today. You use the code MBA. You get 50 bucks free if a player in your first prize picks entry scores a single point. This is good stuff, folks. Prize picks. Get after it right now. Now let's talk about Jonathan Kaminga because our national nightmare is over. 
Uh, Jonathan Kaminga has been selected for the Rising Stars Challenge. I believe Chris Duarte, the apple of so many Warriors fans and analysts' eye during the NBA draft, is out. Chris Duarte is out. I believe he has a foot injury. So Jonathan Kaminga is in. Awesome. I'm personally still not going to watch the Rising Stars Challenge. I don't care. I don't care. I have I have gleefully, gleefully avoided the NBA All-Star Game for more than a decade now. Jonathan Kaminga being in the Rising Stars Challenge ain't changing that for your boy. Not one bit. That said, he definitely deserved to be there because I had looked at the roster and I swear they were making dudes up. Making dudes up. And Jonathan Kaminga's out here locking down LeBron James on a Saturday night primetime game. Yeah, he should probably be in that game. 19 years old, this kid's incredible. Uh, I'm glad. It's sort of a weird emotion that I got going on. Most of the time, I I, want to stand alone. I want to be an NBA hipster. I want to see something and bring you all to the side. It feels like the love and praise for Jonathan Kaminga is overwhelming right now. It just can't stop. People are just gushing overflowing with praise for Kaminga. So you're all on the same bandwagon as your boy. And honestly, I don't hate it. Usually I'd be like, oh, this is too much. I got to get on the other side of this thing. Nope. 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 You bet on athleticism, folks. You bet on athleticism. The crazy thing about Kaminga, the athleticism's there. You're seeing that every night. It's the basketball IQ. Everyone, No one ever said that he was you know, a, a, a thick player. No one ever uh, alleged that he was a Kelly Oubre type. I didn't realize how good the basketball IQ was. I watched plenty of G League Ignite games last year. I watched the entire NBA G League bubble. I'm that kind of weirdo. Kaminga didn't look like that kind of guy. He looked like an athlete who was going to need a couple of years. And the thing that was holding him back wasn't the athleticism. The thing that was holding him back was the game moved really fast for him. The game, he didn't seem like he had a great grasp on everything that was happening out there. He was 18. Of course he didn't. But at 19, he shouldn't be this comfortable, this in control during an NBA game. Maybe it's just as simple as he went out there and realized, oh, these dudes can't check me. Oh, I'm the best athlete on this floor. And acted upon those suspicions with just some crazy stuff. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just as simple as why should I be scared? Why should I feel inferior in any way? Why should I have doubts? I'm I'm the best athlete on the floor. Let's boogie. That said, it's it's still it's still baffling. You know, we talked about Wiseman in the first segment. Wiseman's basketball IQ was not first off in a fostering position last year for the Warriors because the Warriors didn't know what the hell they wanted to do for the vast majority of the year, and it wasn't until Kelly Oubre went down and Wiseman went down, that they were able to say, okay, we're going small ball, we're going to chuck a bunch of threes, and we're just going to beat you with pace. By the way, one of the reasons the Warriors aren't playing very well right now, their pace stinks. They're slow as hell because they're tired. They're tired. They went hard as hell to start the season. They came out of the gates, guns a blazing. Yes, I know that's a conf- conflated analogy. They came out of gates. They had guns. Pop, pop, pop. They were going crazy. With them. That was always going to come back and bite them in the rear. Always. You can't go that hard in the NBA. You've got to pace yourself. They're playing 82 games. They haven't played 82 games in the NBA in a couple of years. you got to pace yourself. And they didn't want to pace themselves at the beginning, and they made a hell of a statement. This is the period where the pacing was going to happen, whether they did it on their own accord or just it naturally happened. This is where the pacing comes. These are the dog days. They just want to get to Cleveland. They just want to loosen it up. We'll see what Wiseman has. We'll see what he's been able to learn from behind the scenes. He spent a lot of time with Clay Thompson just watching the game. Great guy to learn the game from. Makes it puts it in really simple terms. One of the beauties about Clay Thompson, he never gets enough credit for this. He sees the game and he can explain it in just I truly believe this. I'm not being hyperbolic here. Brilliant terms. The way he can explain complicated things in such simple manners is brilliance. And he doesn't share it all that often. I've been lucky enough to be on the receiving end a couple of times. I can only imagine the wisdom that's been imparted to James Wiseman. It's a very good thing for the Golden State Warriors, all things considered. That said, it's got to translate. It's got to come out on the floor. 
We know what Jonathan Kaminga is getting when he's got Draymond in his ear, when he's got Andre Iguodala in his ear, when he's got Steph in his ear, when he's got Steve Kerr in his ear, when he's got Kenny Atkins in his ear, when he's got Mike Brown in his ear. He's got a lot of very competent, smart basketball people talking to him. And it's not becoming too big for him. It's not getting crazy for him. He's able to, he's able to process all of it. That is saying a lot. He's able to translate all of it. That's saying a lot. Now the Warriors have a very clear idea of what they want from their players, what kind of roles they expect their players to inhabit. James Wiseman will be no exception to that. Let's see what happens when the constraints come on. Let's see what happens when they lock it down a little bit, put some parameters up. Here are the walls. Don't go outside the walls. We just need you to play inside these walls and we'll win games. They did that a little bit last year before he busted his knee. I liked what I saw during that stretch. That's certainly going to be the case here as we get into the five-minute, six-fouls portion of the James Wiseman experience. Jonathan Kaminga, rising star, absolutely deserved. Don't give up on James Wiseman just yet. It's not worth the trouble. Let's tell you about that online. Football's over. You don't have to like it, but it's true. Football's over. Uh, but that means basketball's in full steam, baby. Maybe not the Warriors, but, you know, <laughs> some teams are really going here. Uh <laughs> And that's both in pro and college hoops. College hoops coming up on it, right? Uh, And so all the latest odds, totals, player performance props, and who the next fired coach is going to be. Ooh, you sinister betonline.net. It's your number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, your podcasts, though I disagree on the podcast part, but I'm biased, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. uh, BetOnline.net is a great source for hockey, boxing, UFC, they can get you some Olympic stuff. It's good stuff. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device. It's all new. And you can learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online. That's where the game starts. All right, let's close this thing off. Let's talk about tonight's game against the Denver Nuggets. I expect Nikola Jokic to score 50 points. 5-0, 50 points. If he doesn't, that's a win for the Warriors. Because, again, Zubac and Isaiah Hartlestein were giving them the business on Monday night. Uh, and any <laughs> Jokic could not be further from Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis wanted to give it up. Nikola Jokic wants to take it. I don't think the Warriors are going to win. I don't think that's a problem. I think that if you want to get all huffy and puffy and worried about it, you're going to look like a fool in a couple of weeks. Second best record in the NBA. They're not going to get the number one seed. That's just fine. I don't worry about that. Uh, number three seeds up in the air. Okay. We'll worry about that when Draymond comes back, when James Wiseman's in the fold, when they got their full complement of players, when Andrew Wiggins isn't dog-tired, when Kevon Looney doesn't need a nap. A lot of veterans, by the way, too, once we get into March, get into April, they're going to be there every night. We haven't seen Andre Iguodala in a minute. Otto Porter's in, out, in, out. Bialica, in, out, in, out. You don't know what you're getting in terms of the rotation. That's all going to start to get settled here with about a month to go. A month to go is just about, uh, what, the 10th of April is the end of the season. So let's say second week, second week of March is when it becomes absolute 100% go time. I would argue it's 100% go time come post-All-Star break. You go, 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 figure out where you're at, see if you can coast or if you still have to keep going. But Warriors have a lot of experience with stuff like this. They know that home court advantage doesn't matter when you're a veteran team. They know. That it'd be nice to not be in Phoenix for a Game 7, but ultimately they can win there. They can win anywhere. Veteran team, championship DNA. Let's just give them a little bit of slack to figure it all out. Because ultimately, if they don't start figuring it out, we can go on them then. We'll have a month to go on them. I don't see, there's much, I don't see there to be much of a reason to go in right now when there's so many confounding factors, when it's so clear that this team needs a break and a break is coming. All right, I'll be back with you tomorrow with Cyrus. Should be a good rest of the week. Have a great one, everyone. Stay golden.